Hello, I'm Miss Dutton, your librarian. I'm going to be doing a short video on research skills and using primary and secondary sources. So my last video covered plagiarism and using good websites and good resources and good books. This will be looking at primary and secondary sources. Ideally, all research you have will have primary and secondary sources used. Okay, so firstly, what is a primary source? It's original material from a time or a person that have not been interpreted. So Martin Luther King's speech, for example. So, primary resources can include letters, diaries, speeches, interviews, film and audio recordings, furniture, paintings, photographs, sculpture, clothing, autobiographies, laws, building and things. By things, I mean anything that existed at the time you were studying. So, it could be an ancient Greek vase, it could be a Victorian sewing kit, it could be something you found from your mother's attic. If you're doing a research topic on a particular country, objects from that country would count. So primary sources include loads and loads of things, but quite often for your research you use a lot of secondary resources, which is great. Um, so secondary sources, a document which interprets an event created by someone who did not experience it. So here is a book about Martin Luther King. It was produced many years after Martin Luther King's death, so it's not by someone who knew it, it's not by someone who was there, it's someone looking at the historical events surrounding his life. So secondary resources can include books, Newspapers, journals, essays, magazines, and even your homework sort of counts as secondary source. So, here's an example of primary and secondary. Primary would be Anne Frank's diary, including translations, copies that we've got in the library, for example. Secondary is a book about Anne Frank's diary. This book came out in 2009, so this person might not even be alive when she was alive. I'm sure she didn't know her. It's someone looking at the historical events surrounding her life and her death and looking at her diary, so it's interpreting a historical event. So, here is a corset that is on display at the Victorian Albert Museum, which is fantastic and free, and this is a book about underwear that the Victorian Albert Museum have, so primary and secondary. So, sometimes sources can contain both primary and secondary. So the way I think about this is, if you are watching a documentary, it might have original footage of an event, it might have objects, but it will also have secondary sources which include interviews of historians or scientists. So it'll be a real mixture. The documentary itself will also count as a secondary source. I also think about museums. So when you go to museums, there's loads of fantastic objects which are primary, but they often come with descriptions of what it meant, you know, little plaques on the wall. Um, there might be people doing tour guides that are secondary sources. So why do we use them? So using primary sources, it's a great way to show that you can look at an object and you can understand things. It's also great if you're using your original data because you found something out. Secondary sources are great to put authority behind your work. So it's not just you saying you think this thing. It's also you saying, well, this historian here, he believes this too. Or this journalist also put this. So when you're at university doing you know, degree, masters, whatever you're doing, you have to, all your essays will have quotes by lots of other people that are important in the field. It's, there's nothing wrong with using other people's information, you're just using it to back up what you think or to guide you. So, if you need any help getting primary or secondary resources, come to the library, I'm happy to help you. Um, and if you do this and continue to do great research homework, you will be very successful. Yeah, okay, thank you.